Hello, everyone, and welcome to the next session of Symposium, where I continue to work with developers interested in building better open source. And joining me again this week is Tushar with Tailcall. And this is our fourth session together, right? Yep. Yep. Optimistic me thought we could get through everything in one session, maybe two, Max. And here we are, four, four weeks later, still working on uh, improving the positioning for the tail call open source project. So you want to give your elevator pitch for those new to tail call, and we'll dive into our positioning exercise. Okay. So this time I'll keep it very short. Um, if you want the longer version, you can check out the previous video. Um, so what tail call is, is essentially it's, uh, stack to build GraphQL APIs. And it can build very highly efficient, highly performant, and robust, secure GraphQL APIs. And GraphQL APIs are very difficult to write by hand. And Tailcall essentially makes that significantly easier. Fantastic. I like it. Okay. I think you're you're distilling every time you give that pitch, you get a little <laughs> bit better at distilling it to, into its essence. Yep. All right. So what we've done in the past three sessions are, I think we've explored what the positioning for this open source project should uh, be like, you know, should we target the front end engineer, the back end engineer, you know, ops, someone else management or, or sort of person doing the actual work. And I think we have uh, largely, I mean, we've always, I think, been thinking about this in terms of we're, we're targeting a pain that intersects with both back end and front end engineering. So we've always always been looking, I think, at those two people, those two personas. And we wrote a lot of notes. And I think what we did in our last session was really hammer on uh, this idea of sort of if if you view positioning as being multi-layer and subsequent layers refining and building on earlier layers, then we've really been working on layer zero which is what appears above the fold in the homepage for an open source project. And in the case of Zio, it's like asynchronous and concurrent programming. You need, you need async, you need concurrent. Well, Zio's your SDK or library to get that done. And I think we've been really exploring, really trying to figure out the same sort of, you know, one sentence pitch for tail call that's going to be above the fold on the homepage for tail call. And the reason why it's so important to get this right is because if we get it wrong, then we're attracting the wrong people or we're not attracting the right people and maybe pushing away everyone if we're pitching something that doesn't really need a solution. And it's top of the funnel. Every layer down you drill, you get more details and more refinements. You're only going to lose people. So you want to start with the biggest, broadest base of people who actually have the problem that your solution sells. And I think we we got we succeeded in the last session of capturing the essence of tail call, I think, uh, because after two weeks of looking at competitive solutions and also evaluating how they position themselves, I felt like I was getting personally very close to understanding why someone would choose tail call instead of Azura or Apollo GraphQL or something else in this space. Does that about... Uh, summarize the past few weeks, or there's there anything yeah. you want to add? Um, I think one thing that we could probably add is we started off with this whole idea that you know we we'll, let's try to communicate the problem that GraphQL solves on our website instead of just saying okay we build, we make GraphQL easier, right? And then yeah. we has slowly sort sort of moved into this um, version of a pitch where we are saying, okay, we make GraphQL easier. You know, that's what we yeah. put on the website. Yeah. Right? So that that was very interesting. You know, that's why it took us so many days to kind of yes. um, reach where we are. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like this direction. So let's talk about what we left off with uh, in our last session. It, it was this first one here, right? It's stop writing GraphQL backends by hand. And you can imagine that right above the fold on the splash image. Rapidly turn your ideal API spec into a performance, secure, reliable GraphQL backend built atop existing data sources and APIs. That's very raw. <laughs> that version there, it's rough. 
And the reason I think that is because it's it's hard for me to say that. It it packs a lot of information. It's super information dense. And I would rather err on the side of having too much there and then cleaning that up later. But a few things I really like. Go ahead. Sorry. How about we first show what's there on the website right now? Yes. Let's take a look at that. Right. Yeah. You haven't changed this, have you? No. Okay. GraphQL platform engineered for scale. And we've got Tailcall is a high performance open source API orchestrator that enables organizations to construct unified data access layers on top of existing APIs. Okay, fantastic. Um, and as you review this old pitch from our current perspective, what do you think some of the strengths and weaknesses of this old pitch are? Um, I think the strengths are at least this piece sort of doesn't talk about GraphQL so much. So it feels like, okay, perhaps I can relate to the problem. Um, however, the top line, you know, the, the edge one is about GraphQL and we're saying GraphQL platform. Yeah. Right. So, and, and then we've I got, think, hmm, at least in the variation one, we are, at least the, the emotion is sort of correct. You know, that writing GraphQL by hand is very difficult. It's almost like writing your own SQL engine, yeah. um, but it needs more work as you said. We're, we're getting, I think, um, the original pitch, it says things that are accurate um, and, and things that are high level, but they're maybe not super close to why you would want to choose tail call. And also, they're not like exactly nail on the head, like yeah. preaching to the exact audience who has the, the pain that you have and who is ready and willing to embrace a solution like tail call. And I think that's what we've managed to do in refining is first off, uh, we, we are embracing the fact that this is GraphQL. We're saying GraphQL, yeah. this is for GraphQL. We went back and forth on that, yeah. but I think we ended it. Yeah. I mean, if, you're only going to ever use this if you're in the market for a GraphQL front end API. So we embrace that fact. And also we're trying to get at the unique aspect of tail call versus the other solutions, which is this notion of make a declarative spec, tell us how you want the API to be designed and then use tail call to sort of generate the implementation for that API, solving all the really hard and nasty problems that you would have to solve if you were building that API by hand. So that, that pitch is tail call specific. It's no longer just generic GraphQL library framework, whatever. It's like, this is why you should choose tail call instead of something else. Yep. Do you still feel that's true? Yes, for variation one, I, I think that's fairly true. Okay. All right. So what both of us did over the course of uh, the past two weeks since our last session is we added some variations. Uh, let's walk through those now and just talk about each one. The first one I added, uh, I think right after, right after our session was sort of automatic GraphQL backends. This idea, because we were talking about this before, that like you, 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 you uh, feed your spec into a machine, and out comes the back end. That that idea of trying to make it seem very simple, and you have a good point on that. I saw your comment, which is that terminology is implies that you don't have control over what that front end GraphQL API looks like. It sounds almost like a magical tool that looks at your schema looks at your open ABI and gives you something. And that something is probably not what you want, what the business wants from you. So I think that's a great point. And then the subtext under that was tail call automatically. And again, that use of the word automatic, which is probably not, not great. It, it's compensated a little bit by what follows in that it's saying it turns your API designs or your design for an API, your vision for what an API should be into a best practice GraphQL backend powered by your existing data sources and APIs. And, and here, let me explain what I was thinking when I did this variation. First off, this concept of graph tail call being something that helps you turn a design or a vision or a spec into a backend. But then what I decided to experiment with was this simplification of variation one. Variation one, we say performance, secure, reliable. Well, what are all those things other than best practice? Yep. 
because this is, it's level zero. So we don't need to over describe the solution here. We need to give people a high level understanding of what it does. And I think best practice does that. And then later on, we can zoom into what we mean by best practice and give people a really concrete understanding of the fact that you get something that's fast and it's very secure and it's very reliable and so forth. And then um, built atop, just sort of playing around with the wording there, built atop existing data sources versus powered by existing data sources and APIs. I, I don't know if it's better or worse, but that's what I was thinking. Okay, and the next Definitely. one, just real quick. Um, wait, do you have any feedback on that other than the, the header there, the use of the word automatic? And I think that's great feedback and we need to avoid- I like the word best practice. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I, I think I like it too because- it's accurate, but it's high level, and it feels like the right level of detail for this one sentence pitch. And it's, it's something that good. In, I mean, this the phrase "best practice." All good engineers kind of use this very often, so it sort of relates people. That's right. That's right. Okay. In variation three, I went away from automatic and more like push button GraphQL backends. The idea that you push a button and you get a backend out. That's not exactly accurate. Uh, it's suggestive. It gets away from the connotations with automatic, but maybe not enough. And uh, the other thing is I tried to simplify that first part of the sentence because automatically turns is we have the verb there, but then we have the adverb and the use of both of them just makes the sentence structure much more complicated. So in that one, I was like tail call converts your specs for new APIs into best practice GraphQL backends. It's a little wordy still, but it is a simpler sentence structure and emph emphasizes the conversion of specs into the backends. So uh, what are your thoughts on both the sort of tagline there as well as the one-line pitch? Is there anything you like or dislike about that? I'm not sure if I like the push button. Uh, I'm not sure if I like it either. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it okay. reminds me of that meme where there's, there's this cotton who's going to push that button, you know, that red yes. button that they should never push. You know, it sounds, yes. sounds like that. At least yes. in my head, it brings sure. about that image. Yes. Okay, variation four um, is the one that you added. Do you want to walk us through that one? So this was actually, um, I was looking at Apollo and Apollo say that's what sort of Apollo says. Um, you see Apollo GraphQL. Uh, API platform for the modern stack. You know, so that yeah. if you have a modern stack, then this is the platform you want to use. Yeah. And we are saying we are the modern GraphQL stack. You know, yes. Of all the stacks, we are the most modern. Yes. So that That's how I sort of thought about it. Should it be stack here or should it be platform? If stack is taken to include sort of, you know, everything uh, related to the API, including custom transformation rules and whatnot, um, because they're saying they're the API platform for the modern stack. So the modern stack includes GraphQL at the front end, but also includes other stuff down there, such as your business logic. So um, a, a more direct analog or ripoff <laughs> of, their, of their pitch might be the modern GraphQL platform. Is that correct or is that wrong? Is it a stack or is it a platform? Is it a stack of things that help you solve a problem? Or is it a platform for solving problems? Or is it a tool? It's a tool. In my opinion, it's just one binary, at least in the current state. It's not a platform just yet. Yes. So what do you think there? I think stack is more appropriate stack. I know, how, how, how do you think between a tool and a stack? When I hear stack, I think um, multi-layer, and different layers have different concerns. So like, you know, front end stack would mean I have a router and I have a render and I have all these different things and they all do different concerns and together they constitute the front end stack or like full stack. You know, you have the front end, you have the middle uh, tier, you have the back end and so forth. Um, basically that multi-layer approach. So if, if tail call is a stack, then what are the layers? Agree. So it's not a stack, it's not a platform. Amit says, I feel problem with the word modern is a user would be wondering what the value is at is being modern for my business. Well, here's how I view the word modern. It's basically a nice way to say 
we're not for legacy system, right? We're not for, we're not for adding to what you are already have in the sense that you need new use cases. You need greenfield projects that need new APIs in order to benefit from new GraphQL APIs. So I, I think their use of the word modern is basically saying, we don't go in between your front end layer and your back end layer and make something that already exists better or faster. Uh, what we do is we add something new to the top. So you need greenfield development that sits on top. I think that's what the use of the word modern does is, is basically kicking out people who are just interested in uh, not doing any greenfield development at all and just making a little part like the caching layer, caching tier better. Um, and I think that's the only point that it's serving as well as it has positive connotations. It, it's not positive to say, um, you know, throw away your legacy front ends, build new ones that are powered by GraphQL. Um, that would not be a positive way of saying that modern would be like modern front end applications need GraphQL. And this is for the modern application, for the modern GraphQL application. Um, I, I would say, uh, but you're right. Like modern doesn't tell you like what the benefit is. It's just, it's purely one of those things that, that, that hints and suggests at the fact that this is not a solution for legacy front end applications. This is a solution for new greenfield applications. But as opposed to Apollo, what we are saying is that we are modern, right? We are not saying it's for the modern stack, which is what Apollo yeah. is explicitly saying for yes. the modern stack. Yes. And we're saying a modern, what are we saying? We're saying a modern, the modern GraphQL stack. I want to say tool set, but I, I think because Telecall is evolving in the direction of a platform, uh, what, what does like, you know, I Nginx would... describe itself as? A platform? Hey, proxy server. <laughs> Great. How about a GraphQL runtime? Okay. Runtime is generic enough. I think we can get away with that. And then we can up, update subsequent ones. All right. So I, I like I like this. It's generic. It's vague. We only have a few words there to convey something important. And here we're saying, in modern, we're saying for greenfield front-end applications, but we're also saying this is a better way to do it than what came before. Um, and then GraphQL, we're filtering out all the people who are looking for API gateways and saying, no, this is this is if you want um, GraphQL front end. And then runtime is sufficiently, I think, generic that, I mean, it, it implies that it's handling some of the heavy duty work of actually executing it, which tool does not. Tool, in my mind, it could be an IDE that helps you write your GraphQL schemas. Uh, it's not as integrated. This is a part of your GraphQL runtime. It, it, it's executing it. So I think that's a far better word than tool there. So I think this is it's good. Like, and it's also much better than platform now. I think yes, it is because platform is big and heavyweight yeah. and you know, yeah. plugins and frameworks, SDKs, all that stuff, which you don't have now, you might at some point, but uh, that will push off people who are interested in the lightweight solution here. Okay, and then what do you have here? Can you walk us through that? Tell call. It, yeah, it does all the heavy lifting of putting your existing APIs into best practices GraphQL. It's sort of what we did here. Yes. Uh, variation two, just a reword. Yes. And and the only thing I don't like about that, and it might just be me, is the use of porting. Yeah. Because yeah. porting implies to me, like when we port an application from C to C sharp, we delete the old thing and it goes away. Mm -hmm. And that implies like almost like a modernization, enterprise modernization project in which you go in and you do these big refactorings to get stuff running in the cloud or whatever. And then that takes years. And then when you're done with that big refactoring, you delete the old thing. So I think the use of the word porting here, because it basically implies a conversion or rewrite of some type where you discard the old thing might suggest the wrong thing and might suggest yeah. that this is a big heavyweight enterprise solution that takes you years to implement. Um, and that would be wrong and cut us out of a lot of the good market. So I, I think if we can find a better word there for porting, then we might have a, a winner. And then after I saw this, and then also in response to your feedback, I did two other quick variations. Uh, one, this just copies your your tagline here, the modern GraphQL runline, and says, Telcall lets you package up 
your existing data sources and APIs into a best practices GraphQL backend. And then I wasn't happy with how long that was. I felt like it could be simpler. So I made this final variation, which there's a lot of alternations you could use here, which is basically just quickly turn. So deleting the notion that we have to mention tail call here, uh, because it's just extra stuff that we have to communicate that's going to distract from the essence of the pitch. Of course, people will be assuming that this is what tail call does because we're on the tail call website. So what does it help them do? Quickly turn existing data sources and APIs into a best practices GraphQL backend. And, and I think you could modify this. You could you could say instead of convert, or you could say turn, um, or or something like that. And and also here the emphasis is uh, I put it on the fact that you are not replacing anything necessarily, right? You can have existing APIs in your organization and existing databases, and you're just adding another layer. Um, so you're adding another layer that gives the front end engineer what they want. And, and I think that's an important way of looking at this when you're selling to the enterprise is don't touch what you have, just add to what you have. Add a new piece on top for your new greenfield applications that's gonna give the front end engineers exactly what they're looking for. Uh, but also it doesn't quite capture the same idea as heavy lifting, right? heavy lifting of, of uh, converting existing APIs. And also it's further away from this notion of converting a spec or a design into a backend. Yep, um, exactly. That becomes, right. So we have to decide whether or not, you, you tell me what you think of these two new ones, and then we'll take a stab at our, what we'll say is our final variation, um, just so it, these things are never final. <laughs> but I think we're yep. already at a place where we have we have good choices, and, and they're all major improvements, I think. So what do you like and not like about all of these? Uh, that's going to inform our, for now, final variation. I want to ask you between uh, the, the the sentiment that is sort of conveyed from the first variation. Yes. Does that come across in any of the variations? Just the H1. I and think is that, is that important? I think we lost that. Um, we still have a little bit of it here uh, and here. And here we're starting to lose it. And by here, we've we've lost that notion that um, basically the contrast with stop writing them by hand. Well, if you don't write them by hand, then what do you do? Well, you have graph, you, you have tail call, implement them for you based on a spec. And I think by here, we've lost that. I mean, we've forgotten that there are many aspects to yeah. tail call. So we have to decide if this is the one, the spec to backend is the one we want to preserve or if it's more the add add new best practice GraphQL backends. No, add new best practice GraphQL backends to all the stuff you already have on top of, add it on top of all the stuff you have. And the, both of them. This one, I think, manages to convey both of them, but it's super long and verbose. There's also sort of like a contradiction where we are saying, okay, stop writing by hand. Yes. But at the same time, we, we are not saying that, you know, automatic generating it automatically is not something that uh, we want to convey, right? We don't want to say, yes. okay, it's completely automatic. Yes. So how do we say it's com it's basically automatic, but it's, yes. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if it's That's where this, it, it's hard. And so we sidestep the issue, right? In simplifying this yeah. pitch, basically we sidestep the issue and say, that's too complex to explain here. We're going to paint a bigger picture uh, of the value proposition here, which is like, it's not even writing it by hand, right? If you step one layer back, why is it bad to write something by hand? Yep. It takes a lot of time and you end up with something that's not best practice. Well, we're saying that it's fast and that you get something that's best practice. So we've just stepped one level back in order to simplify the pitch. And these things are still true and we can say them somewhere where we have more space to say them. That's my thought is yeah. this is a nuanced pitch and in simplifying it, we've got to throw away some of this nuance. We've got to, sim we've got to make it more abstract. And then later on, we'll, we'll drill into specific things. I think modern GraphQL runtime is good edge. I mean, it's simple. You get it. I agree. So let's just make that sort of the default heading forward. And, and how about, what do we want to say right after that? 
I really like the variation three version, you know, spec of new APIs into best practices, GraphQL backends. Um, but it's it's not as uh, I mean, va variation five is very clean. You know, you get it, you understand it. All right. So here's a simplified version of that. Tail call converts uh, API specs into best practice GraphQL backends. And then I put a comma here so we can add a little bit more detail, but as a separate thought that just refines the first one. So tail call converts API specs into best practice GraphQL backends, comma, break. And if you forget the rest, you still have the most important thing, but then built atop existing data sources and APIs. And, and you could say your specs. See, the reason why I like that new APIs and why I add it, it makes it more complex of a pitch is the fact that it's like, okay, you have um, your task with building a new API, right? That's what drives you to tail call. That's the insight there is you need to build a new API and that's your job. So you have a idea of what that, you have a spec for it, or you, at least you have an idea of that API inside your head and you need help turning that into reality. And that's why you go to tail call because you're going to get there faster and better than any other way. It is, when it's a longer pitch. API, when you're talking about new API, we're not talking about GraphQL API. You're just saying. Yeah. I, I think new API, yeah, GraphQL API. Oh, we're saying, so tail, uh, tail call converts your specs for new GraphQL API. Yes. So you you have an idea in your mind of a new GraphQL API that you want to ship. And tail call is going to help you realize that. It's going to help turn that idea or vision or spec into something that actually works and runs and is built on existing data sources and APIs. Is there something that's confusing about that or inaccurate? I think at, at least the first time when I read it, I thought what we are trying to communicate is um, for every use case, we are creating these new APIs instead uh, because you're creating these new API specs, you know, co constantly yes. instead just use GraphQL, which is, which can, which is flexible that way. And we'll build the best practices GraphQL backend for you. Um, but that's not what we are talking about. Yeah. Right. Um, so how about something like tail call lets you. So when we say best practice GraphQL backends, we are sort of, um, um, saying that it's. We're not saying anything about it being automatic or the fact that you have control or the fact that you don't. We're just saying it will be the best practice GraphQL backend. Yes. So that's that's a good thing. Um, so we've already sort of made our pitch, right? Like we are building the best uh, practice GraphQL backend and we're building it on top of, our ex on top of your existing data sources. Yes. The heavy lifting piece in Variation 4 just says, okay, I think it's it's another pitch. Like we are just saying, okay, that the process of building that backend best practices backend API is also much simpler. Yes. But do we need that? Uh, so you're saying we should emphasize the fact that you get best practice GraphQL backends. Maybe it's enough to say that it's fast and easy and actually sort of quick almost implies easy. Actually quick also implies that I have less control because it's quick. I mean, at least gives you sort of that. Yeah, that's where, you know, a lot of these, th that's what I was trying to get where is like, we're going from your spec into a GraphQL a API or implementation. You get the back end and it's spec driven. It comes from your spec. So you have the utmost control. Uh, you could say that look the way you want or that, you know, function. You, you could say it might be too low level based on schemas you design. Is that too low level? Mm, I think we so. Could, it is too low level. Yeah. Also a little too desperate, you know, <laughs> just saying, okay, we'll do it exactly your way, <laughs> but we'll do it in the best, <laughs> we'll produce the best practices API. Uh, the the and contrast, we'll do it quickly. <laughs> yes. The contrast here that I would like to find a way to express is this notion that you have control of, over how it looks, yep. which is the thing that you want to have control over, but you don't, you, you give up the burden of having to make something that is secure and scalable and very fast. And so you're, you're giving some stuff up, the stuff you don't want, but you're still holding onto the part you do want, which is control over the design. You could say uh, creative control. I don't know if that's going to be understood, 
but but you could i don't like starting a sentence off like that but that that could be one theme where you're not losing control you're holding on to control how about design and ship best practice graphql backends i like that word design because it it captures that and i know you don't like that word quickly but i feel like <laughs> you know yeah. a, a pen and paper let you design and and ship best practice graphql backends but the reason you don't do that is because it takes too long so like there's there's got to be some reason why Apollo GraphQL will also help you design and ship best practice GraphQL backends, a top existing data source, but it won't help you do that fast. How um, about putting fast in the end? It's awkward grammatically. Um, but if you turn that into a phrase, it could be less awkward, you know, faster and better than writing backends by hand. It's too long. <laughs> I was like, fast exclamation mark. Oh, <laughs> like that. <laughs> Yeah. Uh that that works. I think that works. Okay. Uh any modifications to this? I th I think, you know, when you have one word here, you almost want one or two other words, right? And you have a pitch like this is so short. You you could say fast, robust, you know, uh scalable, right? You have you have a few words you can play around with and and it will probably make this because right now this word just standing by itself at the yeah. end, it looks kind of lonely. He needs yeah. a few friends. He needs two other friends. If he has two friends, then I think this works. And you could even put it on a separate line, fast, scalable. You know, you can pick what to put there. But Actually, I think this Vercel is Vercel does this. If you see Vercel, um they have something like oh they've removed it. Um that's something like pre ship design review ship something like this just three words yeah three words is nice it's perfect so i would think about uh what's what are the um three most important things we could say there about tail call or Plus you could secure. you could have a phrase like in days instead of months and that you could almost put there but i, I do like that period actually because it simplifies the amount of information you have to keep in mind or you could say like um next week not next year <laughs> i don't like knots so, so sounds like my holiday plan <laughs> next week not next year like a plan it's always a plan yes it's always a plan never <laughs> happens but it's always a plan okay so i i think we have a winner you like this one yeah okay i do as well okay so now we have we have time to get beyond our tagline and we, we can tweak this over time. I think this is way better and really does um, speak to the strengths of tail call, albeit at a high level. There's still some refinements at this next level of uh, positioning. We need to go into more why it's different than everything else out there. And I have a couple of ideas. I've just been thinking about this in the back of my mind from time to time. Uh, but one of those ideas is uh, is just sort of when I picture this website, I see in my mind somewhere. I'm not saying it immediately follows this, but it's it's something like uh, it's it's something like has three columns and it's uh, loved by front end, uh, loved by back end, loved by ops. You know, this idea, and maybe I don't think this should be right below the fold, but somewhere on the page, this idea that it's loved by the front end engineers, it's loved by the back end guys, it's loved by by ops. And the reason why I'm thinking about this is because there are a lot of things that are unique in tail call, which makes it lovable by all three sets of people. The front end guys love it because they can get their GraphQL, which they want GraphQL, even if they don't know they want GraphQL, they do want GraphQL because of the tooling and all the other reasons we we talked about. But also they get the exact API they want for every possible use case. Why? Because the cost of creating these is so cheap. So they love it. And then also you back end engineers love it. And this is our main pitch. So this becomes, you know, almost highlighted. It's bigger than the other two. So we bump that one up. And we make that bigger than the other two. And that becomes like in a feature bar, this is your preferred plan, pricing plan. And then you have the other two off to the yeah. side. And why do they love it? Well, they love it because 
uh, the, the, the implementation, they don't have to do the implementation themselves. They get that from tail call and it's already very fast. It's best practice. It does all the caching, you know, it has all these nice properties. It's compositional. So if they use it at multiple layers, then those can be fused into a single layer. So that's our pitch for the back end right there. Why do back end people love it? Well, let's state that in one sentence or two sentences. Um, and, and it's a pitch just to them. Because if you're a front-end engineer reading this, you read this. Why do I love it? That's why. If you're ops reading this, you know that's why I love it. So this gives us a chance to target these three different personas and sell to some of the strengths. Because even if you're just a back-end engineer, you're going to want to know that ops is not going to have a problem with this. And then you're going to want to know that it's going to make your front-end engineers happy and, and vice versa for the other positions. So I, I like the idea of having something like that on the page somewhere, but it's your call. Agree. It's a very good idea. And then we, we talked about some of the key features here, and I think we need to rank these. I don't think we're going to have all features on the homepage. I, I don't even know if we want features. Um, so here's one idea. How about benefits? What is this? This is heading. Okay, so, so we'll, we'll make a heading to, do we want a section and, and it might not have this header, it might just be sort of in line, but do we want a section that gives you the top three or four benefits of using tail call? Yeah. You can think of this as features because you will be talking about features, but you're only talking about features in so far as they solve actual pains. Agree. Do we want, oh, we do, and okay, so. One of the things is that we've already changed the H1 to GraphQL runtime. Yes. Right? So we don't need to talk about features in so much detail because if, if somebody knows what GraphQL is, they sort yes. of already have something in their heads about what to expect. We got a question I see you answered, and then we got a comment. Tail call transforms your API into best practices, best practice GraphQL handling the heavy lifting while giving you full control over the spec. I'll just copy that. It might be a little bit long for that one sentence pitch but it, it does manage to combine the, uh, I think the heavy lifting part. I cannot copy from that for some reason. That is interesting. Oh, maybe now. Okay, so uh, benefits, what would be the top three benefits? So this could, these could be combinations of some of these features. So um, dev productivity. I, so we need to now actually kind of figure out what level of abstraction do we want to talk about? Yeah. Right, so... Um, if you're talking to engineers, then, are. then the benefits for an engineer would be, you know, um, I don't know, how do you say productivity really? Uh, you can do it faster and easier. Um, productivity lets you do more with less. And there might also be an implication that you can be happier when you're doing it. If the way you're achieving productivity is by eliminating the need to do many things that the developer doesn't want to do. So I think we could ask, mention that aspect. There's, you can do it faster. You can do it better. You can be happier while you do it. You can do it with joy. I think those are the three, if you're thinking about like from an engineering mindset and, and also the engineering, the engineer does care about how he looks to his, his colleagues and his engineering management and so forth. So saying you can help him be productive, uh, even though it's a bit like it's a bit of a manager's concern, but none the, nonetheless, I think a lot of engineers will be like, oh, you help me deliver something that's amazing in a small amount of time that can only help me look good to my colleagues and to management and help my career. So, so benefit is, I mean, the first benefit is best practices, GraphQL, that you don't have to now learn about. Otherwise, you would have to. It takes time to be, to build anything which is best practices. I'm thinking is is that is that the whole is that the like like the super benefit of everything, uh, or is this just one of multiple sort of benefits, each having roughly the same level of impact to a back end engineer? Uh, what do you think? Can we should we be breaking this apart? What else would we put here? Because most of the things are going to be here, right? So the way I think about this is writing this engine is extremely hard. Yes. And if you want, the, and there are a lot of features 
that you can build if we have introspectability. So I'm I'm just thinking out loud right now. Yeah. Right. And those features include things like query planning. Yes. Uh, I mean, it requires to kind of implement query planning, which is sort of very close to what um, SQL engines do. Yes. And that essentially is like a look ahead optimizer. Mm -hmm. Right. Nobody's going to write all this code. Yeah. So you get a lot of optimizations for free without really thinking about implementing them. So it becomes faster, significantly faster. So you don't have performance bottlenecks. So performance in, in essence is one big one. So is, is that part of best practice or is that separate? I mean, best practices for better performance, I guess. So maybe we can split this apart, but what's a, something else we would list here? So I mean, it says compile time guarantees. So you get a lot of validation errors before instead of runtime errors. Actually, we wrote a yeah, lot we did. of things, we... key features and... Key features, right? So optimization, which helps us be performant and efficient. And then this notion of being correct slash reliable. Uh, so th three big things stand out here, sort of the performance and efficiency, the reliability and uh, the tooling support. Um, so, so performance and what else would we say by best practice that's not here? We, we probably mean secure, right? Yeah. Handling error messages, you know, error handling. Would that be part of a bigger category? It's, a, or... I mean, it's a part of best practices, I guess. Okay. And what else? You can't have five. But these are, to be six. are these benefits really like? No, uh, performance features? is, reliability is, uh, great tooling is a benefit. Um, the benefit would be either tooling or maybe even like validation. You get validation ahead of time. Um, it's uh, which which helps you like integrated tooling or or uh, smart tooling. But But you can always take that one step back and say, what's that tooling helping you do? Yeah, I, th I think these these two are not benefits. Mm. I mean, secure, the fact that you get something that's secure is, error handling is not a benefit for sure. Um, but but error messages, like um, sort of default out of the box error messages could be considered a benefit. You know, um, another way to think about this is, what if we have a sort of checkbox and a feature checkbox? And we're like, uh, and, and we just we talk about how uh, tail call gives you a best practice GraphQL backend that checks all the boxes, and then we just go through um, and sort of check, 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 and then we have a name of something, and then we have one sentence to briefly describe what that is, and so it just lets you see sort of at a glance what we mean by best practice or even beyond best practice. Um, what do you think about that? What do you mean by name? What name would that be? Well, let me show you. So what I'm thinking is here you have a little checkbox. Here you have something that's uh, performant, performance, and that's the name of this benefit or name of this best practice. Every GraphQL we can think about this as being every GraphQL backend should have these properties. It should have the property of performance, high performance. And, and then here you would say something like uh, tooling friendly. Yes, tooling Extendable, friendly. A customizable product. This is a way to present this information without being too dry or dull. And a checklist we could do probably in a way that doesn't take up a lot of vertical space. And you can just go down and see, is this ticking all the boxes for me? Um, just sort of at a glance. I don't I don't know. It, it depends on you what you think about that. I like it better than this thing. Reliability we need to add. Yeah. And what else did we say? Tooling friendly, reliability, performance, high performance. Platform, uh, like being VASM compatible, being you know, Kubernetes compatible or Docker friendly and those kind of things. So it's almost like um, deployment agnostic. I'm not sure exactly how we would phrase that. 
deploy it your way, uh, it, it is a benefit, I think. I don't think that this is the right ordering. I think that we should swap some of these. This should probably be, what was that one? Customizable. Uh, we can just say Vasm friendly. Oh, just Vasm. This is this is not correct. Uh, was it, what did you suggest? You I said one what? benefit could be could be that it's Vasm compatible. See, I think a lot of people will not appreciate that. <laughs> appreciate why that might might be a benefit, but maybe that's okay. Edge I'm not compatible. sure. Sure, that's better. Oh yeah, that's way better. I'm I'm thinking about one benefit of this is is the DX or front end. Um, and this is where you would talk about how tail call um, backends have informative error messages. You know, you talk about all the benefits that go in here that otherwise you're going to have to write all this stuff yeah. by hand. How about saying, instead of saying DX for front end, we say self-serve front end. Yes. Yes. And then you could say a lot of things in here, not just related to that. Uh, right, this notion, and this is, we're pitching to the back-end engineer. I think we decided that. So this notion that uh, the front-end engineer can take care of their own problems. They have their schema. They have great error messages. They they can't crash things. Um, how would we want to say that? Did you look up that article that, that trashes GraphQL and try to summarize? Yeah. Yeah. yeah? Uh, so what, what are some of the reasons why GraphQL sucks? <laughs> According to this, he actually opened it. Mm -hmm. Samson asks, was way. the site built from scratch or using some framework or tool? I think your existing tail call site. Yeah, I've shared the link. It's open source. It's on DocuSaurus by sc from scratch. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So first problem was security. Um, okay. So security. <laughs> they talk about rate limiting is is unique. Actually, rate limiting, in my opinion, is a resiliency feature. And rate limiting is one way to build resilience in the system. It's so, not, yeah, it's not applicable to GraphQL in, in the conventional sense, in the traditional sense of what API is and how they are rate limited. I don't think it's applicable to GraphQL. Yeah. So I find this, I mean, I don't want to rant on this blog right now. Sure. <laughs> You made me open it. So, I did. So so let's ignore this one. I think the secure one yeah. is a good thing to mention. Is there anything else here that we're missing? Performance. Performance we got that. See? <laughs> yeah. N plus one problem. So I'll just mention that here, that when we talk about this, we need to mention that problem. But N, N plus one is so... Uh, I mean, GraphQL is basically shamed for N plus one. Yes. And it's it's essentially a performance problem yeah and maybe it deserves its own section on the website you know no okay. n plus one problems sure I, I will add it here and then we can decide whether or not it belongs coupling sorry coupling I'm trying to think coupling. if that translates yes. into some benefit of tail call this is a complaint about debugging essentially yeah it might be useful at some point to uh, break out tooling friendly into a certain benefits that come with being tooling friendly, uh, like sort of, you know, statically verified, right? Um, static verification, et cetera. Yeah, actually, yeah. I think that's what we should write instead of tooling friendly. Yeah. This complexity. That's easy. <laughs> I, I like this. It's just that REST solutions are generally much simpler for a backend developer to implement and understand. Yeah. That goes to our prior decision to target this to the backend engineer. The backend engineer looks at GraphQL is like, no way, too hard. Uh, yep. The front end engineer looks at GraphQL is like, yes, I want that. Uh, so what we're saying to the backend engineer is you can give the front end engineer what they want without having to pay the high costs that go into delivering a best practice GraphQL backend because tail call pays those costs for you. What about uh, auto generation of these configurations? Like you want to bootstrap thousands of APIs, we could do that automatically. I don't know how to talk about that, but um, I, I do think that 
might be useful for people in the situation where they do have a lot of internal APIs and they don't really have any specs around what these GraphQL API should look like. They want to get something in place and then maybe refine it. So the fact that you can take all these open APIs and generate something on top of them could be quite useful to help them get started. Um, okay, so we're about out of time. Let's let's talk about just the major sections we want on the homepage. So I think it could be useful to have some sort of teaser here that shows you what it looks like because this is a developer solution. Developers are always curious, show me the code. So in this case, it might not be code. It might be, it might be a GraphQL schema with custom attributes, annotations. We have one of those what there. We have right now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, that teaser, I think, will be will be useful. We do want a teaser section because we are targeting the backend engineer. And then uh, benefits. We already talked about this being the high level pitch. Loved by. I think this could be useful. I might even in this layout. I might move it right here, right after the teaser. I'm not 100% sure about that. What what are the other main sections we want on the homepage? The, the teaser could be the getting started section. So I see you uh, have combined them. You're giving people a taste in a two column layout here. Yeah. Where you have the code over here and then the uh, call to action over here. I think we have these benchmarks at the yes. bottom, which are pretty good. And we'd like to show them. And these are on GitHub. You can go and play around with it. Alrighty. So a benchmark section. And I'm just trying to think right now, is that is that a benchmark section or is it really a part of a credibility section that's designed mm -hmm. at building credibility in your target audience and might have other things as well? Yeah. Uh, I'm I not sure yet, right. but it, the way they look to me, and they look good. They look good and uh, the numbers are nice. They're nice and big. So I think they do have the effect of building credibility. And you also have partners section so I think it is common. Go up to the top. You have a partner section, right? Yeah. Right. So Should so we that add, the, add them to the top or bottom. I, I think typically that happens like right after your splash image. Um. So right after uh, this one right here, your next one might be credibility here. Um. It it does go. It tends to go very close to the top because people get interested when they see logos. Of companies they recognize yeah. um so I, I think we would maybe put that here and we maybe also think about bringing the benchmarks up here because i think there's a, a way to do that a layout that you could use to maybe show benchmarks as well as show logos and this section maybe even show a quote from a user all in one section that's all about how you can trust us it's worth spending 60 more seconds of your time exploring this home page but from a story point of view, don't you think, you know, get started, then benefits, and then those are the reasons why people love, and then in the end you have credibility, you know? I, I don't mind that. I think on a lot of websites, you will find the logos close to the top. Sometimes even they're above the fold, but that's when they're a logo bar. If we're thinking about a more substantive uh, credibility section, it has logos, it has benchmarks, it has a quote from a user, a raving quote from a happy, satisfied user, then I think we're going to need more space. And 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 that maybe more implies that putting it at the bottom is not such a bad thing. And I have seen credibility sections down at the bottom when they're heavyweight. And this one, I think, could be a heavyweight credibility section. You're asking people to trust them with their GraphQL backends, which have so many possibilities for going wrong. Um, and also it's a new solution. Not a lot of people know about it. So you're in the early days when you have to do a lot of evangelizing and building credibility. Um, so I think having a more substantive um, credibility section makes sense for tail call. Sure. All right, if we, if we have these sections, do we want anything else on the homepage? We've got our splash, we've got getting started, loved by all these different people. And I think this copy is important. What we say here is going to be very important. And then benefits. That section I was looking at on the tail call homepage that you just showed, mm -hmm. that is the benefits section there. It's top developer experience, performance, and scaling, which is an aspect of performance. You have to think if you want to call three things out. I think we tried to do that here, but our list got too long. So the question is, do we want uh, 
do we want to take three of these and pull them out um, and say these are the top three reasons why you should you should use it or do we think the emphasis is around the sort of batteries included approach where you you really do get a back end that checks all these different boxes and and you can combine them too i don't think it's an either or i think you could have top three things here i think some of the benefits we'll express in this love by section anyways yes and in so fact the benefits are really like it. their persona specific right the front end people yeah. love the fact that it's self serve and it's uh, they get their apis quickly etc back end people love the fact that it's secure and the front end people can't take it down and that they don't have to work yeah. a lot in order to give the front end teams what they need and ops loves it because of simplicity of of architecture and performance and security all that stuff observability yeah. All right. Well, I, I think this is looking pretty good. I think now it's a matter of filling in these sections. And what I can do is I'll try to find some time to just insert some copy here, but feel free to edit it and put in your own copy. And maybe we awesome. can review what we come up with in one more session. All right. Thanks so much, Tushar. Perfect. Thank you, John. Look forward to seeing this website online. That'll be very satisfying after all this work. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Have I a great weekend. Changes right away. Yes. <laughs> all right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 